Dan Marino with 25 wins in his first 30 starts. That's right. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens get it done yesterday against the Colts. And he also ties, like you said, Dan Marino for the hottest start as a quarterback in the Super Bowl era. He's 25 and 5. You can say what you want about this kid, but this kid gets it done. This is the modern quarterback. Get it done with your arm and your feet. Now, will he continue to develop under Greg Roman? That's to be determined. But this dude will have one more Super Bowl than Dan Marino. I will say that right now. Wow. Okay. Wow. Hey, the turnover chainsaw. <laughs> Big game from Washington State here. Big interception. Gets the interception. He goes over and gets the turnover chainsaw. And Jenna, you know the two things yeah, I hate in the really world. Injustice and mimes. And this is the, <laughs> it really takes care of the second one. The chainsaw turnover I just it's it's just perfect it just was the the perfect cherry on top of a wonderful weekend congratulations Washington State and the turnover chainsaw wow got to be careful with those that's things amazing so get hurt so Patrick Mahomes Jenna I think people know Dan Marino poor Dan Marino rough weekend for him Lamar Tizer beats him for fastest uh, 25 wins Patrick Mahomes beats him for fastest 200 career touchdowns also 25 touchdowns, one interception this year. No one's ever done that. But a little context in these 100 career touchdowns. Yep. How many interceptions does it usually take to go along with it? Tom Brady had 53. Peyton Manning had 69 interceptions for his first 100 career touchdowns. Patrick Mahomes has 19. What you're watching is the greatest start to what will end up being the greatest career ever played in the NFL, Jim. All right, well, Big Ben did not have a great game yesterday against the Cowboys by any stretch at all. Through three quarters, he looked awful and banged up. And if, and if I'm being honest, he looked old. So how did the Steelers come back and beat the Cowboys yesterday? One, Minka Fitzpatrick was just a beast because he has been all season long. And two, Ben Roethlisberger all but willed this team to win. His fourth quarter, 11 of 16, 144 yards, two touchdowns, 136 passer rating. This is a game the Steelers lose years ago under Mike Tomlin. Not this Steelers team. Not this year. Not with this quarterback as this team now sits at 8-0. So Steelers won a game they almost lost. Unlike the Seahawks who lost a game they should have won. How about Josh Allen out dueling Russell Wilson? Russ had an interesting day. Threw for 390 yards, two touchdowns. Also had four turnovers. And that terrible Seattle defense continues to to be terrible, very consistent, giving up 415 pass yards, four total touchdowns to Allen. Bills get the win. So, Brandon, let me ask you, bigger story here, Russ turning it over four times uh, or Josh Allen torching that Seattle defense? Ah, uh, <laughs> you got to go with Russell Wilson, his struggles. I mean, you go back to the Arizona game, you can say he had a really good game outside of three plays. But when you turn on the film yesterday, this dude probably had his worst game in the last two years. Uh, this is my preseason pick as far as MVP. He just opened up the floodgates for everyone else to step up, step up into this conversation. Now, when you look at the, what he did yesterday, the interceptions, turning the ball over, those are things that have got him to this point of being in the MV, being an MVP discussion, leading this whole discussion. But those are things that usually go the other way. Step up in the pocket, trying to make something happen, ball security, but then getting stripped. Or the, the interception in the end zone, this one right here, trying to do too much. That's all on him. But the thing that stood out the most for me was him in pass protection. Like, that's on him. I've never been around a quarterback that's been more involved in the passing protection than any other quarterback. Like, this, Russell Wilson was hit 11 times. He had guys just running free. And to me, that's all on him, starting with Shoddy, but all on him as well because he's out there setting the protection, pointing out the mic. So he wow. didn't even get an opportunity to get in a rhythm because of not setting the protection right. So I don't know what's going on in Seattle right now. I'm hoping that this is just, a, just one bad game and Russell Wilson will get this team back on track, Nick. Well, I think I might know what's going on in Seattle. And... Kevin Wilds was earlier on it than anybody. Three weeks ago, he said the Seahawks are a sneakerhead missing a sneaker. 
This is a this is a team that does one thing extraordinarily well, move the football through the air, and they're mediocre to awful at everything else. And which means when your quarterback doesn't play well, and he didn't play well yesterday, he didn't play well two games before against Arizona, you're not going to be able to win. And so I'm going to give a very rare 48-hour and 10-minute wow. tease. But Wednesday, 8 a.m. sharp, we're going to have some major upheaval in the Nick Wright wow. tiers. The committee was on the phone with me Don't last night already, given how Tampa Don't looked do it. <laughs> and given how Seattle looked. Because Wilds, Don't do it. they are trying to duplicate what the 2018 Chiefs tried to do. We have an A-plus passing game, a mediocre running game, and an awful defense. Can you get through a full postseason that way? And I am starting to have my grave concerns over whether or not they actually grave can. Grave Okay, great. I'll make it simpler. Yeah, the answer is no, you can't. There you go. No grave concerns. <laughs> hey, Pete Carroll did, had a fun <laughs> quote yesterday. Check this out, guys. He said oh, about the Bills and his game plan. These guys didn't even try to run the football today. What the heck? We didn't expect that to happen. We didn't think they would totally abandon the running game. We had a real nice plan how they were going to run it. We <laughs> had to be able to work out. <laughs> I thought, okay, so some excuses here. So for one, it's, it's, he's got a little bit of a point. They only rushed for 34 yards. So like, all right, maybe you got a point. The third thing, Brandon, it's a little bit of a technical snafu here because when you look at worst defensive teams through the air, the Vikings are in third, and it says they gave up 288 yards. The Falcons are in second, and they give up 310 yards. And the Seahawks are in first, but you actually, instead of the yardage, it's just a poop emoji. You actually have to click on the poop emoji and then see that they give up 362 yards. So it feels like the Bills saw that, and Pete Carroll didn't realize that, thought it was kind of a sneaky thing, but the Bills took advantage of their poorest defense. So they, that's, it's, it's not Pete Carroll. He went in a little bit confused that teams were going to try to throw the ball on him. <laughs> well, I kind of understand this. Well, when I first saw this, I was like, Pete Carroll, what are you talking about? You have the worst defense, the worst pass defense in the NFL, in history of the NFL. Why would you say this? Why would you even game plan this? But the more I thought about it, I said, I kind of get it. Well, you can't do everything great, so let's pick one thing. So they picked the run, and this was a great week to pick stopping the run because you got Josh Allen. Look Why? at Josh Allen the last four weeks. He hasn't been able to throw an outcut, a five-yard outcut. He's been throwing wobblers and ducks. Yeah. So it, it kind of makes sense if you think about it. It's like, okay, if we stop the run, let's let this guy beat us, Josh Allen, who's shown to, to, to regress the last couple weeks. And right, so. it, and it turns out the cure-all is the Seahawks' defense. But I want to talk about the other element of this game. So I've got an interesting list of quarterbacks. And uh, Wilds, just quickly, see, see if you can guess what these guys have in common. This is hard, by the way, so don't feel bad if you get it wrong. Carson Wentz, Kirk okay. Cousins, Daniel Jones. What do you think those three quarterbacks have in co common, Wilds? I would say Carson, uh, something about turnovers. What is turnovers? Yeah, you, you're <laughs> on the right track. Those are the only three quarterbacks in the NFL with more interceptions than Russell Wilson. And so what does that oh, mean, wow. America? Mm -hmm. What that means is, as Brandon alluded to at the beginning, it's not only that the MVP conversation is wide open, it's that the MVP has a clear and obvious favorite at this point. And it is not Russell Wilson. Aaron Rodgers. And it is not Thomas Edward Patrick Brady. And it is not as good as he's been Aaron Rodgers. It is, unfortunately for everyone aside from me, it is Patrick Mahomes. There is no argument Russell Wilson's been better. There is no argument his team has been better. And now, Russell Wilson, it felt like the entire media was sending Russell Wilson flowers and apologies for never send, voting for giving him one single solitary MVP vote. Well, Brandon, I knew you were unless going things here. change drastically, unless they change drastically, 2020 is going to be like every other year in NFL history, which is a year that ends with Russell Wilson, as great as he is, 
receiving zero MVP votes because Mahomes and Rodgers have clearly separated themselves from the pack. Hey, see, look, I knew you would go here, so I did a little light research. Go back to 2018 <laughs> okay. when your boy Patrick Mahomes won the MVP. He threw 50 touchdowns, mm -hmm. and he also had 12 interceptions. So we're halfway through this mm -hmm. year. Another half to go. Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson still on track to, to mimic what Patrick Mahomes did. If he can get back on track, which he easily can, because Russell Wilson is not a trendy player. He's not up, up and down. He doesn't go with the ebbs and flows. He is a guy that can ball week in and week out. So if he gets back on track, when he gets back on track, I should say, he will be right back there where he needs to be. Patrick Mahomes is not the clear-cut MVP right now. It's still Russell Wilson. He just opened up the floodgates no, for man. us to have these I discussions. Wild, I've got a He's bonus. He's still on track. Oh, He's still on track. I had a bonus trivia the question. Problem, It'll come it, later. It, it's okay, all great. that cooking. If he didn't cook so much, he wouldn't be throwing all those picks. Take it.